Come here now, girl. Hello and welcome to WhatMap, your one-stop shop for everything workshop. I'm Bomb Bombi and you're very, very welcome. Right, it's Friday. Friday today we turn to the Bomb Bomb Buddies over on Patreon and say, hey guys, vote us in a map. And they've gone with this one. It's a creator request, so thank you very much for that over on Discord. So it's your turn. And Squiddo, you've done very well. You've made what is very nearly an exceptional map. And I say that a little bit tongue-in-cheek because it is basically an exceptional map. And it's a map that is so close to scoring really, really high marks. Unfortunately, given that... It's my first map. You have made a few boo-boos. <laughs> and unfortunately, some of them have been really painful in the scoring areas. So we shall see. We maybe learned something today. Maybe. Before we do any of that, of course, you'll want to grab your Bomb Bomb Bingo card to play along with any memes as we're going along. And of course, you'll want to interact with the interactivity. That's right, all sorts of activity are good, but interactivity is better. Thank you very much for your ongoing support and for hitting that like button. Today's map is the Continental Divide by Squiddo. Okay, so this is uh, an American themed and uh, it's got a lot of things really spot on beautifully well. Start square looks there. We don't have an intersection, but we do have a national road, so you can do your own work, but it will work fine. Uh, the terrain heights, uh, we've got some very interesting mountains and a very strong buildable area as well. The resources, a lot of ore, a lot of oil, a little bit of fertile, plenty of forestry. It's good to go. And of course, if you've got Sunset Harbour, you want to do some fishing. It's a bit light on water, but uh, if you want to do a bit of anchovy fishing in those lakes and a bit of salmon, you're okay. Off to the workshop. What do we need? Well, it's a mass transit map. You will need mass transit for this one. There's a few list of, uh, a list of requirements, a few things, not too many. Uh, Continental Divide theme mix and the Nemesis LUT are the two in operation there. And I say a few things to subscribe to, plant and stuff. However, the map loaded broken. Now, I did my bits and I found that you do also need uh, a power line network uh, to make this map work. And once you have that as well, you have a lovely working map, a very nice looking working map. But yes, uh, so remember, what broke the map was the power lines. So the question is, do the power lines add anything to the map? And the answer is, well, aesthetically, I guess, they probably do because they don't actually connect us up with uh, like a dam in the in the um, in the outback or you know up in the mountains or anything like that. They, they don't actually carry any power for us. They're just running along the side of the road for an aesthetic purpose. Of course, once you have your wind uh, turbines or whatever, you can use these to carry power alongside of your roads as well. They will work. They are a working thing, but at this point. They are there just to add an aesthetic edge to the map. And they're a very nice network, so they do add a very nice aesthetic edge to the map. Looking at the map also, please, please look at the map. Does this look grand or what? It's kind of a desert map. Uh, the, uh, you can see we've got tree stumps there. So for me, this is an area that was cleared by man. And, um, and of course, once we clear it of forests, it does become a bit of a desert, doesn't it? This is what's gonna happen to the Amazon. Remember, guys, this is what we're doing to the amp. Well, I say we. I mean, not me, not you, but uh, mankind. There's those power lines there. Um, and then, um, oh, yeah, we've got a bit of a level crossing going on here. Some of you will hate that. I say out this far in the desert, you probably would have been a crossing of some description, I imagine. I could be wrong. Never been to the uh, desert in America. But uh, never been to the desert anywhere, really. <laughs> My sister lives near a desert. Yeah, there is a desert in the UK. Factoids because factoids. There is one desert in the UK uh, down near Dungeness. And that's like the corner of the world that my sister resides in. You'll never find her. you never find her. She lives under a hole. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry, sis. I better, be, I better be good. Yeah, she can beat me up. She's like a black belt. <laughs> when I say like a black belt, she's actually a black belt karate instructor. So uh, 
I bet, and, and even if I get a lucky blow in, even if I were to get a lucky blow in, her husband is three times my size and also a black belt karate instructor. So <laughs> I probably better behave myself just this once. Chances are of chances of her watching this are so remote though. Why would she watch this? Why? <laughs> it's typical sibling stuff. You look, yeah, bruv. Totally boring, bruv. <laughs> I've got karate stuff to do, real stuff to do. Okay, then, sis. Whatever. Anyway, yes. Now the map looks stunning. We've got these little ditches that are carrying water along. It's a ditch network, which is linked into in the uh, in the requirements. So that's good to see. Um, we will, however, be talking about the ditches because the ditches have a quality which I normally end up talking about regarding the rail. Uh, those that are regulars to show will know my normal grumbles about the rail. And today's map will have the same sort of grumbles. I'm actually not going to grumble about this with the rail today. I'm going to save it for the ditches <laughs> because the ditches, I think, matters even, even more so than the rail when it comes to this little problem. Anyway, so far, though, so far, so good. We've got a pretty strong national road. Now, this is our intersection. <laughs> you can call it that. Got a little bit of blue mantle being forced because we have ground-based junction uh, right by an elevated section. That's going to force a bit of blue mantle there. Uh, this heads off towards the edge of the map. Now, speaking of power lines, while we're down here, let me take this moment to show you we have trees clipping through power lines. And it's not just there. Your keen-eyed viewers will have already spotted. See, it goes right away to the edge of the map there. Keen-eyed viewers will already have seen that happen a few times. Uh, we, uh, I haven't stopped for it. I, I wanted you to absorb, because the thing is, it's not all about how bad the power lines are. Remember, it's the power lines that broke the map, and we've got this going on all the way through here. You can barely see the power lines for going through the forests. By the way, start square right there. Pretty good. Bigger start square. But yes, I think, <laughs> I think all things being said, those power lines not being on the map would have been a bonus. There you go. <laughs> uh, I like the idea of them. And if they weren't going through trees and forests, it'll be, uh, it'll be a bonus. It would be a definite bonus. But anyway, um, the power lines end there. Now we're going off towards what in general, on the whole, apart from one little spot, oh, little bridge here over the uh, over the ditch is um, probably missing a pillar. It's a it's a, it's a funny looking pillar. I don't mind the pillar, but it, yes, it's a bit strange the positioning on it. Uh, and anyway, going up into the mountains. On the whole, we're going to see some very nice mountain road work, apart from one small section which is very early on, don't let it put you off, uh, because the rest of it is going to be of a pretty decent standard. Got a few trees to get rather close to the roads, but again, I don't mind that too much, not actually on the highway, and uh, there we go. Anyway, uh, this, this embankment up here is a little bit ugly looking. Uh, that's the one bit that I really don't like with this, this mountain pass. Having said that, the rest of this is at least... Uh, hang on, a little bit of approaching foliage there. It's at least okay going up through to actually quite good. So, yeah, nice little cutting there. I believe that. And then we're heading down to some very nice switchbacks. Now, you may say this little dip in here. Is this real? Do you know what? I think it is. I think that would work there. Um, the, the slopes are almost on point. I would say that in terms of mountain pass work, this is more than passable, pun intended. Uh, more than passable, uh, it's it's pretty decent work. Outstanding, maybe shy of that, but again, to even attempt to do a road like this through the mountains is brave. To do it to a pretty decent standard is credible. And to do it to a really high standard just takes experience and skill and practice, which you only get from actually practicing. And this, I would call practice first map. This is not the finished article. I'm sure Squiddo has got much more for us in the coming years. Edge of the map there. Let's have a look at the rail. Now, hold your breath. Hold your breath. Close your eyes. Don't open your eyes. Keep your eyes closed. Do not look. Keep your eyes closed right now. For now, keep them closed. You're not missing anything. I promise you. 
Uh, uh, we're just following along a little bit of rail line uh, from the edge of the map. Uh, keep them close for now, please. That's fine. It's okay. You're not missing anything. Stop peeking through your fingers. Okay? We're, we're fine. We're fine. It's a branch line. Nobody's really bothered about a branch line. And uh, you, you may open your eyes now. Now, obviously, this line is a little bit abandoned because we have got some grasses encroaching upon it. I'm going to say, do you like the heights of the bridges over these ditches? Okay? I believe that these ditches are basically just um, drainage more than anything. Um, what have we got here? Oh, yes, um, the power line actually in between the two rail lines. I don't know if that was by plan or just by total luck, but we managed not to have any um, power line chaos there. Normally catenary chaos, but yeah, power line chaos avoided credit. But yes, grass is growing on these lines. Uh, believable for a an abandoned line, you may want to delete them. And any other foliage that you may spot on the power line, oh, on the power lines, on the rail. Again, don't mind that height. That kind of works. Uh, I don't mind. Um, I don't mind a little bit of grasses on the abandoned. Yeah, yes. But if you see any, you might want to clear any foliage from these rail routes. Heading up here, we'll find a spur going off to the right uh, and a dead end over here as we're entering the start square. So I would say it's about time we took a brief intermission. We come back for plenty more. Plenty more. Do all your cities end up looking like ugly lumpy grids? Would you like to evolve a more organic natural style city? Then check out Bon Bon B's Breaking the Grid playlist. Click the I button now. And so back to the shipping routes at the Continental Divide by Squiddo. And well, it's just a few little dotted lakes. There isn't really a shipping route. We have air routes. Air routes are fine. Look, here we go. I'll show you again. <laughs> I'm showing. I'm going to show you twice. <laughs> just because. Oh, just because. Uh, because we can. Okay. If, look, if Squiddo's allowed to make a mistake, I'm allowed to make a mistake. And that is what we call an editing mistake. Oopsie. Anyway, um, yes, we have air routes. Air routes are fine. They crisscross in the middle of the map and you'd be good. Water flow. There is a little bit of water motion in this lake here. Don't mind that at all. It means you can put your sewage in there. It'll get drawn away. But you also have access to this lake as well. So you could use that. And you also use this one up here. Just edges into the start square as a poop lake, if that's what you want to do. It's all good. Okay, so all told... The map has some very strong aesthetics going on, hasn't it? Let's start off with these ditches, though, okay? Now, these ditches are a network, and when you combine networks, sometimes you get glitchy bits. Especially when you get something like these ditches. Sadly, each time you merge these ditches, you kind of get these glitchy bits that just look really quite odd. Also, if you have a look, you can very clearly see this is a network. It doesn't quite match up with the environment. Now, I have a solution for this one. Oh, we've got another glitchy bit going up here with the two ditches merging there as well. Not really anything the creator can do, apart from A, avoid using the ditches, B, not merge ditches in together. Those, those are the two options you've got. Or, yeah, just deal with them. Just, just hide them. And anyway, the way I would suggest um, making these merge in with the environment is using the vanilla vegetation that we have just a bit around here, makes the whole area look a little bit more like it's a damp area, prone to a little bit of flooding along these areas. Um, yes, there's a lot of extra props to use along here. Also, this bridge probably could do use an extra support in the middle. I don't believe that would take the weight of the traffic going over it as it is. But yeah, so that's, uh, that's what I would do with the ditches. Now, the ditches, the other problem with the ditches and networks is when you merge these into a lake, it's really difficult to make it look convincing and I do not find that convincing. I think even if you spent hours working on that, it still wouldn't look convincing. We've got a few slightly drowned trees, more paddling than drowned. Uh, they are thinking about putting their trunks on. Uh, anyway, and also we've got some non-terrain conforming grasses as well. You'll see these across the map in various places in the mountains and stuff. But, um, but yeah, it's not on this map. Those aren't the biggest problem. Now, speaking of ditches, this is at the other end of the lake, another drainage. Um, I suppose these are meant to be streams um, heading down from the mountains. I have a little problem with this one. 
Um, it does merge with another one in a moment, as you'll see. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a divergence. That goes up into the mountains. This one does go down into the same lake. But I'm not convinced that it would have split. It doesn't look like a, a river delta kind of area. Or maybe. Maybe it would. But I'm, I'm not so sure about that. Also, and you'll see this elsewhere across the map, especially going under bridges, one or, one or two road bridges, is we're going uphill and we're going downhill. We've got a tree growing out the middle of that one. Uh, going uphill again and we're going downhill. Now, we see this with rail quite a bit and it is a bit lumpy bumpy the rail on this map. But those uphills and downhills on a ditch carrying water, I really don't buy it. I do buy the mix of foliage and vegetation that's being used for the desert areas. This, I would say, is exceptional work in terms of foliage. Uh, really nice work. I'll talk more about foliage in a moment. Now, the aesthetics, um, I had some problems with. Uh, I want to try and match up. We don't normally try and match up with these screenshots. I just go with standard settings. It was a bit bleached compared to the screenshots. So um, let me just show you what settings I'm using very approximately. Um, so opening up a relight, um, I've gone right up on the contrast to 0.8 and drop the brightness and the gamma to standard. And then in Ultimate Eye Candy, I push the global light settings quite a long way up and um, the ambience down to just above zero. And that's roughly ballpark to match up screenshots, but there's no instructions at all on the workshop as to how to set that up. Finally, finally, the trees up in the mountains. I like to see a little bit of blending, just a little bit of fade along the edges of them because this is natural tree growth up here. Um, I don't mind it so much to have a hard edge along where you're merging in with the with the human area where we have cleared it, so you'll get a clean line along there. But um, up in the mountains, I'd like to see just a little bit of fade along the edges. It's got a stylized look about it, this map, which isn't horrible, but I feel could be a little bit more finessed. Anyway, start square, which means we've got an asset of the day. Oh, I'm not going to stop talking today. There's so much to talk about on today's show. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get this pronounced badly, but the Colisso, Colisau, Colisu, Colisu Cyber Cafe by Spence. Uh, now, I always thought Spence was a British creator. They've done some British assets, and I just assumed they were from, from Blighty. Uh, and apparently, they're from Denver, Colorado. So consider that factoid number two. According to their workshop, anyway, they're Denver, Colorado. Um, but before we go any further, yes, factoids, because factoids. Uh, it was considered highly unfashionable for Venetian women during the Renaissance to have anything but silvery blonde hair. Ah, silvery blonde hair. I have some silvery blonde hair. Flex. Actually, more than just a few flex these days, actually. <laughs> Where I have hair, it's... It's definitely going silver. And then on the chin as well. I've done the old um, Corona thing and um, let it grow out a little bit. And yes, hmm, I'm not 21 anymore, am I? Anyway, this is really lovely work. Colisso Cyber Cafe by Spence, in with the old um, tarot top. Uh, broadcasting to the world. Cyber Cafe to the world, I guess. Anyways, what do you think of today's map? What do you think? It's a tough one, isn't it? Really, this one. How do you rate this? Is it a one-star map? Is it a five-star map? Is it somewhere in between? Your vote really does count. We use it at the end of the month for the viewer's choice top 10. Will this be one of the top 10 maps of the month? Only you can decide. Hit the I button now in the top right and call of your screen or the link in the description. It'll take you to the voting page where you can vote for free with a Facebook, Gmail, Apple or a Patreon account. But what do I think of today's map? Well, aesthetically... I like this. I would say this is definitely four stars through and through. Having said that, to get that four stars, you've got to tweak about with the with the settings a little bit without knowing what you're aiming for. So I can't, I'm going to punish it a little bit. I'm going to give it a high three because you might get the settings not quite on point. It can look a bit bleached. Detailing. Um, again, this feels like it should be up in there in the four stars, but there are so many little things that need tweaking and fixing and goodness me, power lines going through trees. Um, let's, let's, let's be credible and go for a medium high three. It's still easily a three star meme, easily. Gameplay potential. This feels like it could be five stars, could be. But 
the map is broken because we are missing we are missing that one item the power line so one star continental divide by squiddo again that is a really credible map uh just it's credible just shy of incredible a few basic beginner errors going on there and i think we've got a, a creator with some talent especially when it comes to um foliage and aesthetics i like all of that they're just missing something anyway if you're still here you're part of the 20 and out elite use the words of the day in the comments to score yourself some population points just for fun and i'll be back tomorrow with a another map in the what's map series um something quirky about tomorrow's just something a little bit i like it though